The first thing we'll do, we'll run ML run uh, Docker images on uh, our laptop. Uh, I have Windows, so I'll just uh, run the first thing, I'll load the UI. You can see all the instructions in the uh, GitHub. Just go here, run the UI as a daemon. Next thing, I'll run the uh, Jupyter, which is pre-baked image with Jupyter, ML run, and ML run service. Uh, and you can see I'm also mounting some local directory to persist the data. Okay, I'll just uh, run this notebook as well, opening two ports, uh, one for the UI and one for Jupyter. Okay. I'll open a web interface in this address, 888. You see I have a Jupyter, I have all the ML run demos, uh, which I can use. Uh, I'll start, if we want to look at README, we can just open the README file, which explains ML run and all the details about it. It give you a high level overview of how to use it, uh, the base concept, etc. With that, you move into the examples. We have examples, demos, the function marketplace is also copied here, and all the data, the artifacts in the database are going to be stored here. Don't touch this folder. Let's move into the examples. We can start with the basic example to learn how Elm Run works. Let's see this example. Um, it describes itself. What we can see, let's run cell by cell. So the first thing is setting up the imports, defining the database path. Uh, if it's not already defined, in this case, in the image, it's already predefined as the local host and the service that's built into Jupyter. We'll just run this cell. We can move on with the cells. The next thing we want to do is define the artifact path. Again, in this case, it's already predefined as part of the environment variables. So the artifacts are going to be stored in the data directory I showed you before. Now we're going to define a, a task. We'll give it a name. Uh, we'll give it parameters, p1 equals five. Uh, we wanna load the artifacts into the artifact path. In this case, it's the default one. We may wanna use some secrets and some labels on our job. In this case, the secrets are in a file, in this file here. It's just a very simple example of how to pass secrets into a, a function. We can see a function that we're going to use. It's called training function. So let's run, let's create this task. Next thing we want to do is run the job. We're going to run a job locally inside our environment inside the Jupyter server environment and we're going to run the training.py example under the MLRun wrapper that also records all the artifacts and everything. So let's look at this training file example. It's also located here. You can just go here and see all the examples of how to log artifacts and data sets and charts and add labels and log results, all the interesting things you could do with the ML run context, okay? Um, and those things are also explained in this notebook. So now we, we just run this training.py function, and we're going to see all those results. You could see that you actually have small widgets here. You can click on those and see the actual uh, image or the, uh, data that's pointed here. So we ran this task. Now the job is also an object. So we can see all the outputs of this job object. See a run object. And the run object has all those methods which allow you to inquire this uh, job. And this job may actually be a local just in this case, but it also could be a remote job or a distributed job on the cluster it will always respond to those APIs, even though in some cases it's a distributed job. So now we want to look and inspect this uh, job. You see, we can inspect the user, the unique identifier. We can inspect the entire object of the, the run. It consists of many different details, 
data, metadata, artifacts, etc. You can observe the state. You know, right now it's completed, but assume you have a long running job, then you can keep on querying the state and see its progress. If you want to see the entire state with all the information, not just the state itself, but also the artifacts and parameters and results and uh, the status and other details, you could do dot show. It's a visual widget that will show us all the information. If we want to inspect the outputs of our uh, run, then we can just go and do dot outputs. And we see that we have a bunch of outputs. Some of them are just simple results. Some of them points to data objects. Okay, each one has a key. They're, they're named. I could, it's a dictionary, so I can grab a specific output. Uh, MRN also records the logs of each run. So if we type dot logs, we can see the logs for this individual run. If we want to look into a specific artifact, then we can just specify which of the artifacts we want. Here you can see we have very basic information about that artifact, only the path. But if we want additional metadata about this artifact, we should use the dot artifact uh, method. And you can see we have other information, uh, data and metadata and other things. Now let's run a more complicated uh, task one with hyperparameters. We want to run the same task three times over and over, and every time specify a different parameter for P2, 5, 2, and 3. So it will essentially run three iterations. Every time we'll push a different parameter. So we'll just run this, and instead of just specifying uh, the parameters, we also add to the task, we add hyperparameters P2 equals 5, 2, and 3. We also specify a selection criteria, which is minimum loss. So this will specify which of the iterations will be uh, passed into the next step as the winning result. We don't have to use it, but it's very useful to let ML run auto select the winning results. Okay, so we're running uh, this thing, and you'll see that it's essentially running one iteration at a time. This uh, local runtime is serialized, so it runs one at a time, but other distributed runtimes can run multiple iterations in parallel and save us time. So you see all the runs uh, were generated. We see only one line for results. There is also an artifact called iteration results, which can show us the different executions. We see which of the iteration was the winning one, the first one in this case. And that's it. So and now we can also inspect the outputs of that uh, run. You can see that there is sort of subdirectory slash one under the artifact. So the first iteration files are under slash one. Okay, now the next thing we want to do is, is use the CLI. Demonstrate how we use the CLI instead of using the local API. You can also run the CLI through a command line, not only within the Jupyter. So just run the CLI with those different parameters. And you'll see that it generates all those uh, outputs again. CLI is, is uh, quite useful. There are a bunch of, of different commands that we can use in the CLI uh, to build containers for the functions, to clean containers that are sort of uh, stale in a Kubernetes cluster, clean the pods that are completed, uh, do other things like uh, list the var variety of things, watch logs, uh, load and run projects and workflows, and again, other things. You could uh, check the minus minus help to get more details about each one. Now let's see how we run an inline code Right now, before we ran a function that was a Python file outside of our notebook, right now we're going to demonstrate how to run and execute a function which is embedded into our notebook. So yeah, we have a function. This function, we usually put a context parameter as the first parameter. This is the ML run context, execution context. In that context, we could do 
many interesting things. We could use the context to log artifacts. Uh, we can use the, the context to set a label for our uh, job. We can log results, which are simple values like scalar values, you know, integers, strings, etc., not files or artifacts. Uh, we can use the context to understand the, the job or run the name, uh, extract uh, secrets, and other interesting things. So we'll just <coughs> run this uh, function, load this function. Now create a new task, which is pointing. You see, I'm just specifying a handler, and which points to my handler. And I'm going to run this task, which is running this notebook above. But what's unique about it, because it's running under run local, so that means all those things are stored in the artifact database. Now, we didn't speak too much about the artifact database. Remember, we loaded a container. Uh, with uh, ML run UI. So let's uh, go into that container. Let's load it. You see we have a default project because we didn't specify project in this case. And we can go into the different jobs. You see the different jobs that I just ran. Um, for every job, we could zoom in. We could look at the uh, inputs and the artifacts that were generated. You now we can open one of those, you see. You can see all the artifacts, also graphical ones. Uh, we can see the results. Remember, we ran three iterations. We can actually see the logs also in the UI. Uh, going back into our uh, notebook, we ran all those things. Now we can also run the same notebook task with hyperparameters, just like before. And we can see all the results. and all the artifacts. Uh, this is the basic example of, of ML Run. We'll follow up with additional demonstrations.